Hi, and welcome back to the Batty.com channel. My name is Brian Thompson, and about 20 years ago, I founded the website Batty.com, where you can find free information and videos to fix Corvette electronics. Today, we're going to show you how to repair both the controller and the programmer modules. Today, we're going to repair this 92 HVAC controller, and we're going to use our 90 through 96 Corvette AC rebuild kit. The 90 through 96 C68 AC rebuild kit is available on the website. We've recently updated this kit with even more parts, and I want to show you some of those today. The problem we're having with this HVAC controller is that sometimes the buttons don't work. Sometimes the lights on the front go screwy. I've heard it described as disco lights, but mostly it's just uh, the buttons not working intermittently. So we're going to open it up and find out why. On the back, we're going to remove the rubber washer to expose the two screws. These screws are 3 16 of an inch, and I'm just going to remove those with a nut driver. These are the shorter screws. Next, we're going to see four screws at each of the four corners. And we're going to remove those screws and set those aside as well. The screws in the four corners are the longer of the two screws. And we're going to gently lift the cover off and set it aside. What we see here is that the main logic board, which is here, has separated from the faceplate assembly. That's causing intermittent connectivity to the faceplate. We're going to finish disassembling this by lifting the circuit board away from the faceplate. Next, we'll disconnect the LCD connector. We will gently lift the light reflector away from the circuit board and we'll rotate the light bulb counterclockwise and remove the light bulb and set it aside. The board has one electrolytic capacitor and the kit comes with a replacement so we're going to go ahead and replace that that capacitor. Okay. This one is labeled 22 microfarad and so we'll select a 22 microfarad capacitor from the kit. To remove the old capacitor we're going to heat both leads, add some fresh solder, and the capacitor falls away. If it doesn't fall away for you, just, uh, just pull it slightly and it should come right out. Next, we're going to use our vacuum solder removal tool. These are now available through our website. Okay. Next, we'll reinstall the new capacitor. We're going to make sure that we line up the white stripe that says negative with the white line on the circuit board. We're going to make sure the capacitor is flush with the circuit board. We'll bend the leads apart slightly to hold the capacitor in place while we solder it. Okay. Next, next we're going to heat the junction between the circuit board and the component pin. We'll apply a small amount of fresh solder and we'll remove the heat. We'll do the same thing on the other connection. We'll use a pair of wire cutters to trim away the excess leads. We're using some electrical contact cleaner. We're going to clean the connector where the faceplate mounts. Next, we're going to disassemble the faceplate. There are two more 3 16 inch screws. They're located here and here. We're going to use our 3 16 inch nut driver to remove those. Okay. And if we look at these screws, 
This is a faceplate screw. This is one of the four corner screws. And this is one of the two back plastic case screws. We'll notice that these two are shorter than this one. And the faceplate has a much coarser thread than the other two do. And we're just going to lift the circuit board. Okay, we're lucky here. We haven't uh, seen a liquid spill on this unit. This is in really good condition. We're just going to freshen up some solder joints, clean the switch contacts, and we'll put it back together. Okay, we're going to rotate the light bulbs about a sixteenth of a turn counterclockwise with a small flat blade screwdriver, and then we'll push them through from the back side of the board. We'll do that for all four. The solder joints that we're going to refresh are these solder joints on the pins that are sticking out away from the circuit board. Uh, the long pins frequently cause uh, vibration and those long pins frequently cause the solder joints to fracture. And so we're just going to make sure that uh, a broken solder joint is not the reason for our intermittent connectivity. So to do that, we're going to apply a small amount of heat to the junction between the, uh, the pad of the circuit board and the pin. We'll apply a very small amount of solder, and then we'll remove the heat and go to the next pin. We're going to make sure that we don't cause any solder bridges or connections between any two of the pins. If we do, Remove the solder and solder it again. Okay. And we're going to do the same thing for the solder joints on the back side. We're applying a small amount of heat between the pad and the pin, adding a very small amount of fresh solder. There we see the freshly soldered connections. We're going to make sure that the LEDs are still straight. We're going to put a small amount of rubbing alcohol on a paper towel and we're going to clean the switch contacts. Switch contacts are these black circles. We're just going to wipe those with the alcohol. Get rid of any liquid residue, any dust. Don't scrub so hard that the black circles come off the circuit board. We're going to use the alcohol in the paper towel to clean the other half of the switch contacts. The other half of the switch contacts are on this rubber sheet. We're going to press each switch contact so that the carbon dot is proud and we'll wipe it off. We'll wipe it off with a, a paper towel and some rubbing alcohol. We're going to clean each of those contacts. Okay. Next, we're going to use some compressed air and clean up the, uh, the button assembly. If your unit has seen a liquid spill at this point, I would recommend uh, taking a picture of the button layout so you know where everything goes back. And then just soaking everything in a, a tub of hot water and Dawn dish soap for about a half an hour to dissolve any uh, liquid or soda residue. Uh, if the, the buttons move freely, then you're probably okay and don't need to do the cleaning. Here's how the buttons are supposed to look. We'll reinstall the switch contacts. We will Reinstall the circuit board. <clears throat> we'll use the circuit board. We'll use the faceplate screws.
to hold the faceplate circuit board in place. The kit includes five new bulbs, but it does not include the plastic bases that the bulbs are set in. We need to reuse the plastic bases that the factory bulbs are in. We're going to use an X-Acto knife and we're going to lift the leads for the old bulbs. Bend them back out straight and then we'll pull the old bulb out to install the new bulb. To install the new bulb, we're going to bend the wires apart slightly. We're going to make sure one wire goes down each of the two holes in the socket so that the leads aren't shorted together. We'll see some grooves in the plastic. We're just going to bend the leads off to the sides. We need to wind the lead around the side of the plastic base one entire turn counterclockwise, making sure that we use the plastic grooves in the base. Finally, we'll trim those leads off flush with the back of the base. And as an extra measure, I'm going to use my X-Acto knife and press the end of the lead down into the groove as far as I can. And we'll do that for all five of the bulbs. We've replaced all five of the light bulbs and now it's time to reassemble the unit. We're going to reinstall the four short light bulbs into the faceplate. We'll press them in place, turn them about a sixteenth of a turn clockwise with a small flat blade screwdriver. We'll do that for all four. We'll reinstall the long light bulb into the main logic board. We'll turn it a sixteenth of a turn clockwise. Next we'll reinstall the light reflector. We're going to reinstall the faceplate into the black connector on the main logic board. We're going to make sure that each pin goes into a hole in the connector. We're going to press that in place. Now we're going to manipulate the main logic board around these bulbs so that it sits flush against the face plate. We're going to plug in the LCD connector. We're going to make sure that each of the pins goes into a hole on that connector. We don't have a pin sticking over here or here. The kit comes with this 3D printed spacer from Batty.com. We designed this as a way of keeping the factory screws at the top wiring harness connector from pulling the main logic board away from the face plate the way this was when we uh, when we opened it up. So we're going to install that spacer. We'll place it over the wiring harness connector. And we'll slide everything back into the plastic housing. We're going to put the long screws back into each of the four corners Tighten those with a 3 16 inch nut driver. Next we'll install the two short screws into the wiring harness connector. It's easy to cross thread those. So I always back them off. Next we're going to reinstall the foam washer on the factory mounting post. 
Today we're going to repair this 92 programmer module. The symptoms are that we see three lines on the LCD panel of the HVAC controller and we know from experience that this is a problem inside the programmer module. We're going to use an X-Acto knife and just cut the factory tape. We'll replace that with some electrical tape later and then we'll throw the dust cover off to the side. Inside we see two boards. One has the solenoids mounted to it. We're going to gently remove the vacuum lines from those solenoids. Set those off to the side where we won't damage them. We're going to pull the electrical connector, set it off to the side. Then we're going to use a quarter inch socket. In this case I'm just using the driver for a, uh, a bit driver and remove the two quarter inch screws that hold the solenoid board in place and then we'll lift that and set it to the side okay. next we're going to remove the two quarter inch screws which hold the circuit board in place and we're going to lift the circuit board out of the plastic housing and we're just going to examine this for issues I don't see anything there okay we see some corrosion on the wiring harness connector really not affected the pins at all so we'll just clean this up with uh, a brush and some alcohol I'm going to apply some rubbing alcohol, use a nylon brush, clean that connector up. I don't like the looks of it. Yeah. Okay. Any brass bristle brushes? Or? Have you got a longer bristle brush on your bench? I got a lighter one. What have we got? This. Perfect. Oh. That has longer bristles. Okay, we're just going to. The typical failures that we see with the programmer module are related to the power supply capacitors. They will short and cause unstable 5, 8, or 12 volt rails. And so we're going to replace these capacitors with the ones in our 90 through 96 C68 AC rebuild kit. We're going to remove the four capacitors and to do that we're going to use a small wire brush this is a brass bristle brush we're going to we're going to brush away some of the conformal coating on the back of this circuit board it comes right off with either alcohol or with uh, uh, a dry wire brush okay to remove those capacitors we're going to heat each of the joints on the back side and add a little bit of fresh solder. The flux is going to help that solder to flow a little bit better and it helps with thermal conduction. Okay, we'll just rock the capacitor back and forth until it drops free. We're going to use our vacuum solder removal tool to remove the solder from each of the holes for that capacitor. We're going to we're going to heat the pad. 
and we'll vacuum away the solder. We'll do the same thing for the other connection. We're going to insert the new capacitor in the board. If we look, there is a, a line on the negative terminal of that capacitor. We're going to line that up with the white negative marking on the capacitor itself. We're going to bend the leads apart slightly just to hold that component in place while we solder it. To solder the new component, I'm going to apply heat to the junction of the capacitor lead and the, the pad of the circuit board. I'm going to feed in about a sixteenth of an inch of fresh solder and then I'm going to remove the heat and I'll go to the next connection. When I'm done, I'll trim away the excess leads of the capacitor and we'll go to the next capacitor. In this case, the values are 22, 39, and 39. So I'm going to make sure to put the right capacitor back into the right location. We'll start by removing the 22. We'll heat its leads. We'll rock it back and forth until it pops free. We will use the vacuum solder removal tool to get rid of the old solder. Next we'll install a 22 microfarad capacitor. Again, we're going to line up the negative terminal with the minus marking on the board. We'll bend those leads apart slightly to hold the capacitor in place. And then we will uh, solder that capacitor in place. And we'll trim the leads flush with the board. Okay, the next two capacitors that we're going to replace are 39 microfarad. We'll go ahead and remove those. We're going to go ahead and remove the next two capacitors, which are 39 microfarad. And again, we just heat those leads, rock the capacitor from side to side until the old component drops out. We'll clear the holes with our vacuum, with our vacuum solder removal tool. Okay. We're going to poke the new capacitors through the board, making sure we line up the negative side with the negative marking on the board. We're going to bend the leads apart slightly to hold those in place. We'll solder those capacitors in place. And we will trim those flush. I wanted to show you the difference between an old style programmer that we see here on the left and a new programmer that we see on the right. They each have four capacitors, but those capacitors are in different locations. Uh, it doesn't matter what location the capacitors are in. It doesn't matter which programmer you have. The kit includes enough capacitors to replace all of the capacitors on your board. It is important to look at the value of the capacitance when you remove a capacitor and to replace it with the same capacitance uh, there are only three values. The, the large capacitor is always 100 microfarad, and it's located here and here. The old style programmer, th three smaller capacitors, which are 22 microfarad each. They're located here and here and here. The new style programmer has a small capacitor at the top, which is 22 microfarad, and it has two 
small capacitors in the center and bottom locations, which are 39 microfarad. So just make sure you remove them one at a time and replace them with the same value capacitor and you'll be fine. Next we'll show you how to replace the communications transistors on the programmer module. Those transistors are located on the back side and they're going to be the black components that have three legs. Uh, these are located in a lot of different places depending on the model that you have. Just look for the black three-legged components. There's one here, one here, one here, one here. In other models, we'll see three or five transistors. The kit includes enough to replace all of them. The symptom that would cause us to replace these transistors, if the air conditioning compressor request was not turning on, on the, if the LCD display on the controller unit shows three dashes or blank, that would be a good symptom that we need to replace those transistors. Those transistors are surface mount components. To replace those, we're going to we're going to use some tweezers. We'll use a small amount of heat, and we'll use an exacto knife. So we'll start by applying heat to the side with one leg using the exacto knife. We'll lift the component away from the board. Next, we'll heat the side with two legs and finish removing the component. We'll do that for all of the transistors on the back side of this board. We'll repeat that process for all of the transistors on the back side of the board. Next, we need to remove the solder from the pads where those transistors were located. To do that, we're going to use some solder braid and heat from the soldering iron. We'll place the braid over the solder to be removed. We'll apply heat. We'll use a slight scrubbing action to scrub the solder off of the pads. We'll do that for all of the transistor locations. Okay. I'm going to cheat. Next, we'll remove the new transistors from the packaging. We'll use some solder supplied with the kit. And we're going to put a dot of solder on one of the three legs of each of the locations to put the new transistor. But the basic process is that we'll heat the pad where we put the solder. We'll place the transistor so that one leg is above each of the three pads and then we'll remove the heat and the component will stick in place. After that, we can apply a small amount of solder to each of the other two pads to finish the connections. And we'll repeat that process for each of the other transistors. We'll apply heat to the pad where we put that drop of solder. We'll place the transistor so that its legs are above each of the three pads. And then we'll re remove the heat. Finally, We'll use a small amount of fresh solder to tack each of the other two legs in place. And for the last one, we'll repeat the procedure. We will heat the dot where we put the solder. We'll slide the transistor into place. and we'll tack each of the other two legs. Here we see the new transistors. We have a little bit of flux residue left on the board 
and we're going to use uh, some alcohol and an, we're going to use some isopropyl alcohol and a nylon and a nylon brush to clean that off. Okay. We'll just apply the uh, we'll, we'll apply the alcohol liberally. We we'll use our nylon brush to clean the areas where we reworked the circuit board. Okay. And here we see the replaced transistors. Here we see an older style circuit board. I just want to show you this for examples. The transistors that we're replacing on this old style board are located here and here and here and here and possibly up here. The new AC repair kit includes some replacement filter foam for the back sides of the solenoids. Frequently we'll see the, uh, the original foam or cork has disintegrated and so we're going to replace it. We're just going to lift up on each of these metal sleeves. This stuff is almost turned to goo. So I'm going to do this over a trash can. We're going to use a brush to clean away some of that old residue. Make that as clean as possible. We're going to do the same thing with these metal sleeves. And again, this stuff will stain your clothes or your carpet. You really want to do this over a trash can. The new foam needs to be cut to size. To do that, we're going to lay the new foam along the sides of the solenoids. And we're going to trim off about a three quarter inch tall piece that matches the height of those solenoids. And then we'll cut it to width. We're going to cut four pieces. Here in the shop, we have made a special purpose tool for installing these. This is my CVS card. If you want the number for it, it's right here. You're not going to get anything from it. We'll put the foam square in place. We'll squeeze it with the plastic tool. We'll slide the filter keeper into place and the new foam is in place. We'll do that on number two. And on number three. And on number four. So that's what it looks like after we replace those filters. We give you enough filter material so that if you make a mistake, there's plenty left over. It's fairly common for the uh, heavy solenoids to fracture the solder joints on the bottom of the circuit board. So we're just going to heat those up, add a small amount of fresh solder, and go on to the next one. We're going to go ahead and put the solenoid board back into the plastic housing. We're going to slide the board under the black plastic tabs here at the rear. We're going to install the two screws that hold that solenoid board in place. Okay, next we'll hook up the electrical connector for the solenoid board and we'll reinstall the vacuum lines. Let's go ahead and put the back back in place. And we'll use some electrical tape.
My name is Brian Thompson, and I founded the website Betty.com, where you can find more free information and videos to fix Corvette electronics. You can also find the parts and tools you see us using in the videos. Thanks to your support, I'm proud to say that 10 Americans have jobs. Hi friends, 20 years of experience can make these repairs look easier than they really are. But don't worry, we have your back. If you're not getting the results you see here, then stop and pack it up and send it to us. We have the parts, the tools, and the experience needed to do the job right.